Yo, it's Hollywood Unlocked and Censored. I'm Jason Lee. What's good, y'all? It's DJ Damage. All right, so listen, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you're also streaming us on all DSPs. We're on iTunes, iHeart, Google Play, and Spotify. And uh, give us good ratings because it makes us uh, a little bit more lit. And because you love us. Yeah, exactly. So listen, we have Ty LaPlay on the show today. Um, I think that's his name. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, Ty but Lapley. He, but whatever it is, we'll figure it out. But, you know, I don't know how to say his name. I don't even know his name. I think I know his name on his new show, P-Valley, but either way, I'm so caught up in what he looked like, I can't even get past it. See, that's the problem. <laughs> See, you objectifying him as a man. You can't do that. Yes. You can't do it to women and you can't do it to men. Yes, we can. And my community- <laughs> Yes, my, we can. My community objectifies the man. And uh, no, nah, but he's been a cool guy. I mean, you know, we we have a text relationship. We don't hang out like that. But he's always been an intriguing person that I've wanted to see, but he's coming up. And in the meantime, Damage, how are you? What's going on in your world? Yo, everything's fine. You know, we still pushing through this COVID-19 pandemic crap. You know, we thought it'd be over by the summer. Now the summer's over. So I'm just kind of here looking at uh, how they're canceling Halloween. So my son can't go trick-or-treating now. So it's like, I wonder how long this thing is really going to be. I'm looking, what you think, summer next year? Like, Listen, how long do you think this is going to extend? I don't know how long it's going to last, but I have to tell you that I'm I'm going to spend my little moment of what I'm doing to just tell you that I've been pissed off watching the news about Donald Trump. New, new reports have come out that he actually knew about COVID-19 and knew how deadly it was and downplayed it intentionally downplayed it to the U United States, you know, the people of the United States, because he didn't want to create, quote, a panic. Now we've had hundreds of thousands of deaths and lots of people that mm -hmm. have it in our country. And we are leading the world in the number of coronavirus cases because our president didn't want us to panic. So I just want to say that I hope that if you are not registered to vote, if you like me even a little bit, Please uh, pause the video, go register to vote. Yes. Uh, or go to vote.org and register to vote. And then please make a responsible decision because, I mean, I can't say who, but a friend of mine close to me told me that their uh, family, close family member of theirs is now, you know, really struggling with COVID. And it's a real thing. So, you know, it's a very real thing. Um, unfortunately, I lost a close friend in this past month or two to COVID. It's real. And it's funny that he didn't want to cause a panic and cause the pandemic. So it's just, it's wild. It's also ironic that he's about to get the Nobel Be uh, Peace Prize, where I don't see any peace that he brought. He's been all danger, treachery, lies, everything but peace. He's yeah. the opposite of peace. And if you vote responsibly, we can peace him out at the end of this term. There it is. You know, and speaking of uh, somebody who's brought a lot of danger, we might as well just get into tie <laughs> because uh, I'm feeling a little uh, ready. Diamond from P-Valley. All the women on my Facebook have demanded that we bring Tyler LaPlay here and just like, <laughs> you know, me on the weekends in West Hollywood, I deliver. <laughs> well, first, thing first, first things first uh you haven't been the only person to make the mistake so i'm not going to crucify you however we gotta we gotta nip it in the bud so it's lepley is it lepley okay tyler lepley wait yeah, let tyler. me let, let me just tell you i'm glad that you corrected me because i've called you tyler play yeah, yeah, yeah. tyler lepley and oh, it's I, all good it's all good I, it happens it happens sometimes i just run with it you know what i'm saying i say yeah you know it's uh it's French. No, I'm glad that you did. So you know, I, I, I'm glad yeah. you're telling me that I'm talking to a distinguished nigga because Tyler, <laughs> Leplay, Tyler Lepley is better than what I was trying to do. Yeah, Lepley. Um, okay. I guess it, I guess it uh, it looks that way, but um, you know what I'm saying we we, we had to correct it, so okay. I appreciate that. Okay, can you just say it one more time so it could stay in my head, please? Yeah, uh, Ty Lepley. Ty, Ty Lepley. Lepley. Okay. Yeah. So we don't even need to call you Tyler. Mm. Nah, yeah. So you know, my friends, most of my friends call me Ty. You know what I'm okay. saying? So I feel like, um, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we sitting down, we all right here. So you might, you know what I mean? Y'all, y'all, y'all my boy. So just call me Ty. Okay. Yeah. So, so as long as I've had your number, this is the most I've ever talked to you. I, I really, I really didn't think, cause you're not a real talkative guy, you know? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't really, you know I mean? It's not that I'm not a talkative guy. It's just that, um, you know, my, uh, my eyes on the prize, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here, I'm trying to get to the bag. I'm trying to take care of the family. And, um, you know what I'm saying? I, I got a, uh, I got, a, I got a long ways to go in terms of, you know, creating my legacy into mm -hmm. like a full, uh, you know, bringing it, bringing it fully to reality. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm just busy. Oh, I thought it was a Philly thing because you guys are both from Philly and I thought maybe, you know, the damage took me to Max yeah. and people didn't really have a lot of conversation there either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, Philly, Philly we're going to give you the cold shoulder too. So it's probably a little bit of that too. So how long ago was it when you came from Philly to LA? Man, it's probably like I'm coming up on 10 years already. Mm, they say 10 years, you start to see some progress. 
Dog, it's so wild because it's like, it's like, you know, I've been seeing progress up until this point, but it's like, you know, everything is kind of, you know, right now at this moment in time, you know, in my life, everything is really like picking up. And it's just crazy how it, uh, it almost mirrors that, um, that saying exactly, you know, there's 10 years behind every overnight success. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of people are seeing it right now, um, you know, and it feels like it's overnight, but there's really lots of work behind this. But, it, you know, to take it back to uh, Philly, man, I left about 10 years ago. So how's been the adjustment to L.A.? Because I'm from Northern California, a little rough city called Stockton. You both are from Philly. You know, L.A. seems to be a little different. You know what I mean? I love L.A., love the weather, but the people are just not like the people back home. How have you adjusted to, like, the bullshit out here? Um, Well, I think it does help. Well, I can can agree. There's a lot lot of nonsense out here. I think being in L.A., uh, whether it's adjusting to the people, a lot of times I'll hear my friends complain about dating, right? It's a lot of times when it deals with people, like people don't like L.A. Um, But what helps me, you know, kind of deal with it out here is, is again, just just knowing what my objective out here is. I think when you come out here, like, uh, uh, without a target or kind of like, you know, you're just moving moving aimlessly, it... uh, it's it's easier to see all the nonsense that's out here. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Everybody's trying to be something, and uh, you know they're forgetting about the hard work that it takes to get there. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when you have people like that, it develops a certain personality that just like you know it rubs everybody the wrong way. But so you gotta know how to move through it. You know, you're only 33 years old though, so you yeah. came out here at 23. I've been yeah. out here for about 16 years. I pretty <laughs> much know everybody's business. I haven't really yeah. heard about you knocking everybody down. I don't know if that's because you're just a really private person. That's because he's from Philly. He ain't yeah, making but, no, uh, no, he ain't making no, no noise. Uh, nah. it's, it's excuse okay. me. Excuse me. A nigga from Philly just moved here 16 months ago, and he has a kid that just popped out last week. So hey, Who's that? Who's he that yeah. He's not important enough to talk about here. He's from show. Jersey. The point is... Yeah, he's is, from Jersey. He's from Jersey. The, the point is, how, how is somebody like you who... I mean, even in telling this, and I ain't even going to tell the celebrity's name because she told me not to say her name today, but even in telling somebody the other day, oh, yeah, I got Tyler Play coming on this show because I had the name wrong. She yeah. was like, ooh, you know, she started getting wet on the phone. I'm like, bitch, this is not the type of energy I want to hear right now. Yeah, how, hey, how, hey, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, did you, how, did, how did you keep your business so private? Um, you know, it's, probably, it's a little similar to what you guys do. You know, right now we are... Um, you know, we're doing something. Our work right now is being broadcast everywhere. You know what I mean? So it's like when you work in it, when you when you when you work in the public light or the public eye, um, I think that it can it can benefit you to keep to keep at least a piece of your life that's private. You know what I'm saying? So it's like for me, the uh, the piece that helps me kind of move around and keep a sane head in the crazy world is to uh, is to have a secure private life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I also deal with my woman too. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I also don't, um, you know, I don't go crazy posting my parents neither. You know what I mean? I kind of understand that like, you know, especially, especially like the social media when it's going crazy and it's on fire, like that is very much a tool. I definitely step into it and I, uh, you know, I interact with my fans because I want to keep that, uh, you know, I want to make it an intimate intimate experience as much as I can. You know what I'm saying? So I'm answering comments and I'm chatting back with people. But, you know, for the most part, that's really a business thing. You know what I'm saying? You've been out here 10 years. It's yeah. easy to get to succumb to the, all the craziness, the wildness of LA, but you, you know, you kept your head down, you got your work done. Where does that resilience come from? Is it in your background, something that happened when you was a kid, your parents? Where does that come I mean, from? He's an athlete too, so I don't know if it, yeah. that had anything to do with it. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a mixture. I think it's a mixture of the thing. You know, so I was just chatting with my mom about this the other day. Just um, you know, she was asking, um, she was asking me like, uh, uh, how'd you get so responsible? We're, we're talking about something. She's like, you know, how'd you get so responsible? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, there was this, uh, and, and we, we shared a nice light moment, you know what I mean? Um, cause we've just learned a lot from each other. And I, and I think that, um, you know, whether it's, whether I learned the discipline from playing football, um, you know, I take some things from my, from my parents. I, uh, you know, I've, I've suffered some, some, some real losses in life. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. Uh, I, I don't. I don't need to, to to be hit over the head 10, 20 times to learn my lesson. You know, once or twice, I can kind of I can kind of pick it up pretty sharp that way. So I think it's really just more of a uh, you know in the nature versus nurture you know uh, argument. I think it's more of a um, more of a combination. You know what I'm saying? There's some things I was born with. There's certain things that I was taught. So I think I think a combination of it kind of helps me navigate. You know. And so you were raised by your mother and your stepfather, right? Yeah. Or, do you have a relationship with your dad? Um, so I, you know, the thing about my, uh, my dad, so, you know, for descriptive purposes, uh, so my stepdad has, uh, raised me since I was about like three, 
Okay. So, so that's pretty much that's pretty much the dad that you know. That's my dad. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I, I don't call him my stepdad, but you know, when I'm when I'm uh, you know describing you know my life for descriptive purpose purpose purposes, um, you know, he's my stepfather. But because I had a dad my whole life, you know what I'm saying? I never grew up with. Uh, you know, seeing my mom struggle or being a single mom, you know, I was always, I always had a dad, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it was interesting. Um, I didn't, I never had a relationship with my biological father, um, which is crazy because as soon as, not when I did some of the small things, but when the haves and have nots dropped mm-hmm. um, and they lived down in Atlanta too, uh, my Jamaican family, you know, my, so my father uh, from Jamaica, so the Jamaican side of my family live in Atlanta. So when the haves and have nots popped off, um, one of the first calls I got was from him, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like straight out, you know, uh, you know, straight out of his story. But it was like, even when I see him. Um, but was it a call to ask for money or a call to say, I'm proud of you? Uh, the former. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was for, um, you know, he, he, want, he wanted some things, you know, money and, um, you know, to, 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 to make some calls, maybe to meet some people. And it was just, um, you know, it was unfortunate, but it was like. Again, I don't have a, like ill will towards him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's more—it's more like a stranger. You know what I'm saying? It's like seeing a cousin you never, you never messed with. You know? Well, yeah, I have. I mean, I—I yeah. I wasn't raised by my dad either, and I—I'm at a point now in my life where I'm successful, and I'm—I yeah. I pretty much am. I'm 43 years old. I'm a grown ass man, and I'm not looking. Is there's no bad blood? I'm just not looking to recreate this reunion. Is that kind of where you are? Like you're set. You had your father. You have your mom. You have your career. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, you know what. Uh, you know, being in therapy for the last like five years, you know, I get a, I get a, I have more of a proper perspective, you know, on, on at least, you know, the way I view life. And, you know, he was going through his things, you know, he was, he had, he had some circumstances he was going through too. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I kind of under, I kind of understand, you know, I, it's not really a forgive thing or, 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 or um, you know, saying that it's okay, but I kind of understand he's a human. Uh, and then I'm 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 also uh, secure with what's going on. You know, I'm, I made a life for myself too. So it's a little bit of both, kind of that, and also yeah. what, what you had mentioned too. So yeah. therapy, because I'm now at the stage of where I want to enter into therapy. You ha- you go to yeah. therapy here in LA? Yeah. Okay. Well, I may need a good referral if you've been with the same person for a while. But I have to ask you, like, what what's one of the biggest things you've learned about yourself in therapy? Hmm. Um. So there's a lot. One thing that I can say, uh, you know, right off the bat is like, um, you know, it really benefits me and I think us, all of us to, uh, to, you know, put your eyes on your feelings as opposed to run away from them or sweep them under the rug. Right. You know, we can start dealing with them and, you know, start pulling them out of this, like, you know, this reservoir of just like untapped energy. Because, you know, you think about it, especially as, you know, as a, as a man, you know, as a black man, it's, you know, it's just like I just have uh, I have anxiety and anger just like and rage just just it just in me just because. You know what I'm saying? Just because of what we go through all the time. So it's just very easy for me to feel that, uh, you know, put a clamp on it because I don't want to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? And like and just like kind of bury it. We kind of do that with our feelings. You know what I mean? So the first thing I would say is it's very beneficial to put your eyes on what you feel, unpack that so you can, you know, control them as opposed to the opposite. Uh, And then, you know, once you once you start unpacking everything and you're kind of getting more of a a hold on yourself and a better perspective on things. It's really nice to walk into new relationships or, or any relationship without the baggage, without, you know, the facade, you know, because this is really just protection, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, once you start dealing with it, you know, this comes down and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's less about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? And it's more about, you know, we can just be here with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Now, I want to talk about your acting career. Is that something you always dreamt to do or you fell into it just being in L.A.? Uh, I fell into it being in L.A. and developed a really deep passion for it very early mm-hmm. after getting involved with it. But it's not something that I, I always wanted to do. I always, um, you know, I always thought I was going to play, uh, you know, ball on Sundays in the NFL, you know. And um, so I got a scholarship to play football. So I always thought I was going to go the football route. And then, you know, that didn't happen for me. Um, so even when I moved to LA, it was really just to get out of, uh, you know, the failures that I went through in Philly and just to kind of start fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you get discovered or you auditioned? Like how did that first acting experience happen? Wait, wait, because I was going to say now with Tyler Perry, you know, he's hired a lot of light skinned actors who don't have no talent. You're, you're different. You, you have (laughs) talent 
And I'd be like, all right, Tyler, now don't, don't shove another nigga in our face that can't read a line or, you know, but you, <laughs> you're, you're different. You, you know, I'm, I'm watching P Valley now. Had I known it was Pussy Valley before, I would have watched it sooner because I've been like, I really got to get into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish but, they would have kept it too. Oh, let me tell you, I'm but all in TV, it. For TV, they couldn't, you, you know. Can't do, oh, yeah, you can't oh, do Pussy oh, Valley. Oh, but listen, I'm all in it now. Frontal nudity. Let me tell you something. This is my <laughs> new favorite show. I'm going to figure yeah. out a cameo, but no. <laughs> to damage this point, I want that's what I wondered too. And I think part of why, you know, I haven't really watched a lot of Tyler stuff is that I just feel like a lot of the guys that come on, like they're cute to look at and they're okay, great. But like I want when I watch acting, I want to see acting that you've been able to deliver. Well, I, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. But I, you know, I think um, you know, one thing that I learned from working with different directors, uh directors and different uh creators is that uh, you know, people people have a different product, you know. Mm -hmm. And people have different audiences. And for, you know, for Tyler, he's really specific with what his audience wants, you know. Um, so it's like, you know, um, that's kind of why that, you know, I mean, that's that's why, uh, you know, he's breaking all these records even to this day. You know what I mean? So I think I think um, I think he could make something, uh, you know, like like uh, like this or this type of subject material. It would just take a lot more time. Right. Mm -hmm. He works on a different model. So I think that it shows actors in a different showcase. It's not that they can't act. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just that he's searching for something specific. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And okay. as an actor, it's our job to give the director what they want. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? So um, maybe I, maybe I need okay. to look at, look at it through those lenses then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do you feel like uh, all the women are gravitating to your character on Pete Valley? Yeah. What do you think it is about the backstory of that character that all the women are going crazy for? You know, I think it's, um, you know, first of all, I think it's refreshing to have a, uh, you know, a character be like, you know, to just have someone like that be be a real protector. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To really protect the women, uh, especially women that get judged often. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's a, uh, I think there's just like a primal empathy that we kind of, feel, you know, that, uh, that I think women feel with that. I think that's the first thing, you know, making them feel safe. That's true. Um, and uh, man, I'll I tell you what, man, we probably spent like three, two and a half to three weeks per episode. So they just, they just spent so much time on everything, including the lighting. Like I've never even yeah. been that way before. You see what I'm saying? But so you know, but you saying that important. it's interesting because that, that actually stood out to me. And yesterday, I actually watching it, I I, I could get the mood. I, yeah. I, you know. And I think I think those combinations adds to like, um, you know, on on top of the fact that I think he's just you know the juxtaposition of the character just makes him very human. Both polar opposites. He's like you know. He's got no problem, you know, pulling the gun to defend you. But, you know, he's rocking her baby to sleep in the same scene. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, that kind of just it creates this. Uh, I think it just creates this air where, um, you know, women are gravitating towards. Him. So now you know, I got to give a shout out to uh, P. Valley for making me look like that. You know, now, now is your, your name on the show is Mississippi? No, but what is my name on the show? Is I, heard, I heard Mississippi. I was trying to I kept watching. Oh, man. Listen, yeah, I kept watch, I kept watching through all the episodes trying to get his name because I'm telling you, I'm so enthralled in the story and everybody on there and all the sexual energy that I could, I don't even know anybody's name on the show. I'm just yeah, watching. So um so Mississippi is the um Fine. the dancer that I end up, you know, semi, you know, trying to be involved with. Okay, that's the girl um, that you were. Okay. That's so, the girl I was involved with. I was okay. trying to kill a baby daddy, rocking the baby to sleep. No, you're, do, you're doing you're doing a lot. What's your name on the show? Diamond. Diamond. Okay. No, I remember. I listen. Ali Hart was Mississippi because I was trying to figure out what the hell your name is. But I'm telling you, every time I rewound each episode so many times that the people at my house watching it were like, "What are you doing?" I said, "Nigga, I'm getting into descriptive characters right now. Yeah. I'm trying because the thing about P Valley that I think it gives you is it's it's very raw. Patrick Patrick very Ian, raw. Patrick Ian Polk. Shout out to him. He's a friend of mine. He created Noah's Ark. He's one of the co-executive producers. You know, the scene. Uh, a transgender or drag queen person on the show. And it's a big nigga too, with a beard and everything. I'm like, yo, <laughs> they are not playing. You know, you get all types of different type of people in the show. But what's, what I like about it, what makes it really seem authentic is that it really is the like nightclubs. I mean, the uh, strip club scene in the South or somewhere like where, yeah. you know, our people are. You know what got me about the show? Because yeah. um, I was watching the show and just, my friend told me, watch it. Just let me know if you think it's authentic. I'm a DJ. I came yeah. up in the strip clubs. Okay. When I found out the DJ was in high school, I remember me being in high school DJing at Club Onyx. And I was okay. like, see, that that's how you know it's authentic. People don't even know things like that happens. You know what I mean? Bringing the baby in before, you know, for the uh, the rehearsal in the beginning, like that stuff I used to see, 
people coming in with their kids, passing the kids off. It's a very authentic show. Yeah. So you know, that's, uh, you know, you've seen that, you've seen that from, uh, uh, you know, from a personal experience and it's like, you know, it was also as much fun as it was. Um, it really, uh, it was also like, it, it was also informative, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I didn't really know the inner workings of a place like that, you know? Of course, you know, when I'm down in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to pull up at Magic. But it's like, you know, I ain't never been like, you know. In the background. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Playing Diamond, he's seeing the intricacies of, of the whole world. So that was dope. But I think also, too, like I, I'm I'm new to the strip club world. Clearly, that's not my playground. I mean, I, I go to different type of strip clubs. But <laughs> I've been to Magic City. I've been yeah. to Girl Collection. I've been to Crazy Girls here in L.A. And I, I have seen... You know, and I've and I've developed relationship with the girls, so I do see like them as people now. Not to say I, you know, because I think you you know, strip clubs they're objectified, right? But like yeah. to be able to see them, see their struggles, see the you know the business of it, making sure they're getting all their money, the conflict, the drama, and the the protection that is there for them. I mean, it's it's been um, interesting, but also like the the frontal nudity. Let me go back to that. Would you ever do frontal nudity on the show? You know. It's not something that, it's not something that um, I'm opposed to, right? It's not like like this, the, you know. It's not something I would say, you know, absolutely 100. percent No, you know what I'm saying? It's just it would have it would have to be in a light like like a show like this. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's that or whether you see the girls coming, you know, coming out coming out the top, it's like you know, it it serves the story. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? It's not just um, salacious. Not just, it's not just, yeah, they're not just doing it to just show you a full frontal. You know what I'm saying? It's got to really, as long as it's, as long as there's truth to the art, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, uh, it's done in a high art type of way. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, we're here to bring truth to it, you know? Because it wouldn't be artistic to do frontal nudity on have and have nots. I mean, because th- then, because then I will tell you, Oprah, we would then know who has and has not. I mean, that, that would. <laughs> But look, hey, listen. I think um, I, I I forget what show it was. It might have been the one with the cult, uh, but that was on BET, mm-hmm. That's a different network. It's also really dependent upon your network. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something like a Stars, you won't get that. Yeah. Something like uh, you know, it's staying in the vein of this reckless conversation. You know, the the whole boom of OnlyFans. Have you been enticed yet to get on OnlyFans? <laughs> because I'm only asking. I'm not asking this question for me. I don't put my yeah. credit card down on those accounts. Yeah. I get the free links, but I have a friend on Facebook. Her name is Kitty Bradshaw. I'm asking for her because she's right, gonna go crazy. Ball, shout out to Kitty Bradshaw. You know what I'm saying? What's up, babe? <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm only asking if you would go to OnlyFans for her. I, I, I'm not in it. So here's the thing. It's like you know, I got a. Uh, so being being on the haves and have nots, uh, then coming to P Valley, uh, I'm gonna ha- I, I'm on a, uh, a show on Amazon next. That's a little lighter. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, make it good. Uh, Tracy Oliver. Um, so it's like I'm seeing, I'm seeing like you know where the fan, where, where the supporters are. You see what I'm saying? At first it was uh, uh again, if you, if you follow those three shows, you kind of follow different audiences. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I feel like right now where my you know let's let's just take IG for example. You know what I'm saying? Like right now my IG is like you know what I'm saying? It's it's uh I, I put it right at PG. You know what I'm saying? It's probably PG. You know, so I mean, I'm, except for when you're washing your car, it's a little PG 13. Yeah, but everybody, you know, everybody's gonna see someone without a shirt at the beach. You know nah, but you, you flexing, you got muscles, your muscles got muscles, nigga. You're yeah, doing well, it's still, I mean, technically, it's really PG. So I've been thinking about, you know, doing some plays to incorporate a only fan <laughs> type of play, you know what I'm saying? You know, just yeah. for, um, you know, for, for, for the fans that want to go PG 13, you know what I mean? Fans might want to go Radar. Right so it's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna say, like, it's definitely not out of the question. So, um, I don't know. Y'all, y'all have to stay tapped into the socials because I'm thinking about putting that play together. Okay, so all the fans that are I watching the show, go to his Instagram, yeah. beg him to create yeah. his OnlyFans so Kitty Bradshaw yeah. can get off yeah. and stop posting him every day on my timeline. <laughs> all right, y'all. It's time for another Hollywood hookup. And if you're big on hygiene, like really good hygiene, then this ad is for you. I know it's hard to believe that when we go to the bathroom in this country, most of us wipe instead of wash. For years, the days have been available but hideously expensive, costing thousands of dollars, okay? Hello Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment is here to democratize blessings bestowed by bidets and offer clean buttholes to everyone. Yes, I said buttholes. Hello Tushy cleans your butt with precise stream of fresh water for just $79. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity, no additional plumbing, none of that, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. That means you can keep one roll, for a long time. 
so the Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself in a few months. Because Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. Even the best two-ply can't cut it when it comes to a hand-free hoop experience. That means do it with no hands, all right? <laughs> Ditch paper products and uncomfortable chafing when you switch to the soothing cleansing stream of water from Hello Tushy Bidet Attachment. And Hello Tushy Bidet Attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. So you're covered. Join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and clean your butt with every flush. That's right, your butt. So this is how it works. HelloTushy.com slash unlock to get 10% off. This is a special offer for our listeners, so make sure y'all pay attention. Go to HelloTushy.com slash unlock to get 10% off. That's HelloTushy.com slash unlock, and that's your Hollywood hookup. Now, recently in an interview, I think it, it was said that you you have a girlfriend? Yeah. So how long have you guys been together? Man, we've been together for a while. Um, you know, one thing that I can say is that, you know, as a... Uh, and, and I, hate, I hate to go back to back to this, but it's just like, you know, that's the first thing that people see me as, right? A black man. So it's like, that's kind of mm -hmm. like my first experience in life. Um, so like as a black man, the last thing that I want to do, you know, after going to war with the world is come home for round two. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's like, she understands that. She's really like, you know, if I'm always swimming in these rapids or these waves out in this crazy world and this crazy profession, you know, she definitely is my calm water at home. And it's like that really, you know, it's another, it's another reason why I keep it private. You know what I'm mm. saying? It's like, because something like that is, um, it's just, it's just really beneficial for like a deeply feeling person like myself. Yeah. And so you do it more to protect it, more to protect it being a special space. experience, a special, yeah. special space in a safe place instead of necessarily being a, you know, not wanting to put it out. Yeah. yeah you know, it's, it's weird, man. It's like, um, you know, even if you just play devil's advocate, all right, cool. So say, say I just like start posting her up all crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it just immediately like, you know. Invite it invites the trolls. It invites uh, you know it you know which which may spark certain insecurities. Which it's just it's just like it attract all the women who think that they're in a relationship with Diamond to because <laughs> you know there's people that uh, you know there's people in my inbox that really like you know they be talking to me like I'm really Diamond. You know mm -hmm. I'm yeah, I could see that. So it's just like you know it, just all things all things included. It just um. It just makes sense, at least for me. Everyone's different, but it just makes sense for me to protect our space. You know what I'm saying? Has this relationship always been that way, or recently with the uh, recent roles that you've been having, has it always been so private? It's been, um, it's been, it's been more. I've always been conscious of it, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's been, um, you know, when I see more, I do more, right? So it's like when I see, uh, when I see, uh, you know, I don't. Want, I don't want to say crazies, but like, you know, the, the negative side of the rise, mm -hmm. it's like when I see that, that's also what makes me kind of tighten up a bit more. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just a very, a very protected person. Now, you know as a man, I'm going to ask you advice because uh, I've tried that before and it didn't work for me. I try, oh, I'm trying to keep this private. I'm trying to protect yeah. the relationship. And she's like, fuck that. Like, how do you get <laughs> yeah. that off? Like, yeah, it, women it, like, uh, you're just trying to hide me so you can do your thing. Yeah. Well, you know, it also helps that I have, you know, an income that benefits. Okay. Like, Cause All it's right. like, you know, cause about it, you know, it's like, um, you know, it's <laughs> tough to believe me if I don't have anything to, you know, show Offer. for it mm -hmm. or, to, or, to, you know, that anything that you can benefit off of it. Not that, that that's why she's doing. I'm just saying, it's like, you know, if I have to be, you know, if I have to be over here and you don't like me being over here, it may help when I come back from over here with something for you. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Or something that helps us, you know? So it's like, you know, I should have brought it, something it, back. You're right. <laughs> it's just like, it also, it really goes, it really goes back to her. It really goes back to, um, you know, your lady in this scenario or your significant other in this scenario. Cause, cause she's really, she, she gets it. You know what I'm saying? She gets mm -hmm. the, she kind of has the vision and, um, you know, she's, uh, she's sharp. She's, she's more, she's mature. So, um, you know, she understands that. I'm sure if she was the opposite, it might be, uh, it might be a little more difficult for me. But how hard is it to be, you, you know, um, in a relationship and faithful when you're objectified by tons of women, uh, and just objectified by people and you know, you're kind of in your prime and you're out here, you know, and I'm sure people are throwing it at you. How hard is it to be faithful and to make her feel secure? Yeah. It's uh, that, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing too. It's like, you know, you can, you can be faithful and constantly away and, you know, if she doesn't, you know, know that or see that, or, you know, feel anything, you're just away. You know what I mean? Um, 
her mind can wander. So I think, you know, always making her feel secure and special, and present. you know what I'm saying, is, is one way to keep to keep it there. Um, and another way is, uh, you know, I'm just, man, I'm just, I'm just, I think this is something that I was born with. I'm just, I'm just super focused, you know what I mean? And there's nothing that I'm going to let fuck the bag up, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Especially not like, you know what I'm saying? Especially not a little piece of tail. But do, so, but do you guys talk about entanglements? Like, okay, maybe we can, you know, <laughs> yeah, have yeah, yeah, we have talked about, um, you know, we have talked about, uh, you know, bringing a girl in, you know what I'm saying? Bringing a girl in, but, um. Hey, now that, that, no, now put that on your OnlyFans. That's the premiere right there. <laughs> Done. Hey, listen, listen, tap into my IG and let me know if y'all fucking with the OnlyFans play. If so, I got some ideas. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you know, you come, yeah, I'm glad that we did this interview because I definitely see a different side of you. you. You seem really solid. You do seem really focused. You're a Thank very, you. you're a very intense person too. Like you definitely... You know, even from the text was you get that you just straight to the point. Like, what are we talking about? What 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 it was yeah. going on? And I and I actually respect that as different type of yeah. energy in the city because people will waste your time and people yeah. will fucking they will annoy you to the point to where you will have to go to therapy because you beat and whoop somebody's ass for sure. So and I and I appreciate you seeing seeing through it for what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's just a directness as opposed to uh, you know me trying to push anybody off in any time. No, I, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So you 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 wouldn't push Lizzo off from a threesome because you know she's oh, been. Oh no, 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 we gonna, we gonna have to bring Lizzo right in. We gonna bring, bring Lizzo right in. Yeah. Hey. I know. I saw Lizzo was kind of flirting, and you said, "Yo, stop playing with me. Tell her to holler." You know. Hey, hey, listen, listen, Lizzo, Lizzo, you call me, man. <laughs> now, I mean, I think it is interesting. I got a track with Lizzo's name written on it. <laughs> I mean, I, I know, I know you taking, but what, what is your, uh, what is your preference? What is your your preference in a woman? Man, I definitely like them confident. Um, you mm-hmm. know, the cool thing about confidence is it comes in, uh, you know, it comes in different shapes and sizes. You know what I mean? Um, it can come from, uh, you know, it can come from your job security. It can come from, you know, throwing that little tight dress on. You know what I mean? Or just, or just feeling good about your, uh, you know, your internal space. So I would say the first thing definitely is a confidence. That's the internal. Um, you know, the juicy thing everybody wants to know is like, you know, what's the aesthetic look like? Yeah, so because think, you yeah. on P Valley. Yeah, yeah. You know, sure. girls gonna assume you want something curvy like you've been on set with. That's naked. Hey, hey, look, we're talking. To, curvy, to, we're talking to Ty. We're not talking to Diamond. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm but, just saying that's what know, our girls think. Now listen, I, I'm not. I, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with uh, you know, the model type. There's nothing wrong with uh, you know, sexy and slender. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I've been over there, but hey, the way the way I am, just the way I'm built, I, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need me a little something. I, I like them curvy. I like them with a little something on. But what about fake asses and fake breasts? We're in LA, so I'm not against the fake ass <laughs> or fake breasts. You know? really? Hey. So here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. And y'all, y'all fellas, chime in. So it's like you know. If you take the fake ass and we and we we you know so we turn around we see it from the back, or, or even when you see it from the side, you know if we get the if we get that side. Well, I, I personally don't ever see it, but I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, to get, talk to me oh, here. I, talk I'm to tra- me. <laughs> Jason, you gotta sit this one out. <laughs> <laughs> it's how it's how sometimes it's how sometimes the ass won't match the legs. Yeah. Yes, you yes. Know what I'm so that's why it's not that it's not that I'm against it. You know, it still looks nice. It's just that like it's like um you know when you see the natural big booty. You know, it got the hamstrings and the choirs to go with it. You see what I'm saying? It's really got the whole accentu- it's got the whole pack, the whole accentuation. Case. And if you pull your girl to the edge of the bed to meet you and her ass is still at the headboard, that's a hey, problem. Hey, so see, see, you already know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, I'm a texture kind of guy. So if it's not soft, I don't want it anywhere. I don't care how big and round it is. If it yeah. feels like cement. You're a texture yeah. kind of guy? What yeah, it got to be that? soft. It no, 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 no. That's, that's real though. That's real though. I need it with my fingers. I want to do. I need it. I need that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I have no clue. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> we gonna get Jason some wop. Don't worry. No, you know you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, I've told Cardi, I love your song. I'm so happy for you. I'm glad that it's number one. But you done fucked everybody. Yo, listen, up. listen, yo. Did y'all um speaking of, speaking of the dope uh, speaking of um the content? Wow, y'all. Did you tap into the uh, the power of pink yet? What's that? The power of pink. The new album I just dropped. No, bro. I sent the info over. You got to listen. No, no, no. Right no. I, did, I didn't. Even... Hold on. I did not yeah, get that. Let me ask Ariella. Did we okay, get we a got, we got, Okay, we got Hold, hold on. on. Ariella, did we, we get a link to his music no, that I did not the, get? To, look, look. We need the link to the album. So check this out, right? I, I, dropped, I dropped the video, too. Okay. Let me start by saying we're going to put the link up right here. Let's start with that. Here, the link is up. 
Okay, bet. All right, so we also need the um the link of the visual because I'm telling you it's the it's the drippiest shit out right now. Um, so I just want to let you know a little bit about uh just the inspiration behind it. Mm-hmm. So it's called the power of the pink, right? So okay. it's like, and know, are we my, talking about pussy here too? That's right. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely I mean, there's definitely references to it. You know, there's definitely references to the power of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Uh, and you know, the influence of it for sure. Um, okay. But it's like, you know, our experience, you know, it's not even just mine because we all got a chance to watch P Valley. You know what I'm saying? My experience down there was just, it was the most immersive one that I've ever had. Um, and I think the reaction of the fans just shows how, uh, how much of an impact culturally that the show is. Right. So, you know, to kind of just commemorate uh, the experience, all of the memories, uh, the new relationships that I have, even with even with you guys, is um, is I just wanted to put it all on wax. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, when we go back and we want that experience, you know, we can tap into the audio. You know, sometimes when we watch something a hundred times, you know, I can only watch. I can only the visual hits a certain peak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before it turns into a classic, and I just bring it back every so often. You know what I mean? But the audio is like I can I can listen to the same. I got the same playlist I listen to every day when I work out. Yeah, playing along with that, I mean, when Beyonce dropped the Lion King soundtrack, I listened to a, like maybe two songs on there, but then when she dropped the visual, it brought it all together for me. Yeah. So I, I understand what you're saying. So now, and I'm the, mad that I didn't get the link before today, but I'm going to look at it now. Oh, Yo, listen, if you're a visual person, like I'm the same way. I'm a visual watch person. Video, watch the video first. You're going to get it in the first 10 seconds. Okay. Now, now, when you say the pink, now, is there pink in the video or of is Of course. It... What you mean? Yeah. You need okay. the, I need the whole vibe. Yeah. Okay. So I got to, I got to watch this with the pink. No, you got to go man. watch it. Like, stop playing. It's, it's dope. You got to no, watch I'm a, it. Listen, I could, I could be around pussy without being uncomfortable. I ain't that gay. Come on, man. We don't need to be around. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't that fucking gay. <laughs> All right. So listen, you know, I'm on this whole fitness journey. I just lost 58 pounds. I'm working hey, on man, getting- Congratulations. To, thank you. I'm working on, you know, I want my Thai body too. Uh, your body is ridiculous. What do you? What is your fitness regimen, and how do you stay? No, I'm. This ain't no. I'm. This ain't Jason being. This ain't Jason being messy. He's. You know. No, I get it, Jason. It's just you know. I'm still. I'm getting used to it. Getting used to what? No, so I'm gonna let. I'm not a type of person that's stingy with the with, with, with the game with the juice. You know. What Thank I'm saying? you. I, I share it. So it's like I'm telling you. I, I, so even just from playing football, I know what to do a little bit. I can get my little swole on. I can hit my push-ups. I know what I'm doing. But it's like, you know, when I got to get ready for a roll to make sure I can come out the shirt right, it's like, you know, I'm always tapped in with glove works. My my cousin got this. Um, so he used to be a boxer, right? And so he's got all the game, but he's just one of the dopest personal trainers in the game. So he um he he owns, a, he owns I think, three gyms now. I think they just expanded. Um, but he's got a, a gym called Glove Works. Um, so even so, if you're in LA, he's got one in Century City. He's also got one in Santa Monica. But it's like that 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 boxing um, workout. It's just a hell of a like an anaerobic burn, and I can still kind of get cut up at the same time. You know what I mean? So it's like that. That's really what I do. I be boxing over at Glove Works. So we're boxing is your thing. Work. You're are you not? So is that that's where you do all your cardio and stuff too? Like you're yeah, not a runner. It's not just the boxing gym. Like he's got the whole gym inside it. Also, it's just centered around the boxing. Oh, and it's, it. like, it's some state of the art type shit because you know, I mean, I don't want to say I'm bougie, but shit, I mean, I need to, I need to feel, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's 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 uh it's got you covered if you need that type of feel. It's on yeah. some boutique fly shit. So how are you staying fit during COVID? Are you still going to the boxing gym? Is it yeah, open? So he's got a, yeah, he got a um he he just went he just went virtual, dog. He was such a like you could really see his business acumen fucking start peaking when this shit happened and everyone shut down because mm-hmm. he just went all virtual. And it's like it's almost like his it's almost like his business even went up from here. Mm. I just been tapped in with him just like I am with y'all. All That's right, so fun. so what do we have uh, to look forward to uh, in P Valley? Because I mean, it's going to come back for another season, right? Yeah, yeah. So we got we got greenlit um, after episode two, which was a really quick order. Um, so shit, you know, Katori actually gave a, a couple great interviews about what to expect because mm-hmm. it's like you know, obviously, I want to get into Diamond's backstory. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, like I want, I want to get into, uh, I want to get into the PTSD. There's been mentions of it. Like I want to get into, uh, you know, what his triggers are. What, uh, and again, just deeper into his backstory. We need to see what, like, what's going on with people. So um, that's as a as a fan of the show, what I'm eager to see. But honestly, man, I couldn't even tell you because Katuri is so she's so tight lipped about her baby that mm-hmm. the show is her baby. So um, we really got to tap into Katuri Hall's IG, see what she's talking about. I want to tap into that uh, fi- final episode where it's finally the showdown of Diamond. 
Mississippi baby dad. We all was ready for you to whoop his ass. And for some reason, <laughs> it was more of a fight than we was expecting. Yeah. How did you feel when you seen that in the script? Because we just thought you was going to watch this dude. You know, he's a yeah. shaggy white dude with the polo on, and he starts, like, giving you work, too. We didn't yeah. see that coming. No, I, you know, I didn't see it coming. And uh, <laughs> when I actually, when I read it, and then more so when I um, when I watched it, it was, um, you know, it made sense. Because you don't want, you know, Derek was built up for a while before you even saw him. You know, Derek is controlling, you know, Mississippi. And it's like, you know, it's making it very hard to, to do something that seems easy. You know what I mean? So it's like it made sense that he, uh, you know, he was holding his own a little bit because it just gave him more, um, you know, it just gave him more weight as a character in this P-Valley universe as opposed to, you know, because Diamond comes through and saves the day anyway. You, I mean, you've seen where, I, yeah. you've seen where Diamond had to leave Derek. I left him on the floor, you know. No, but, no, you won. We get yeah, that. You won. But it was like, yeah, it was nice you know, to watch it. Yeah, it's nice to watch the battle, though. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you, um, it's almost like uh, it's, you, know, you have to earn your victories. You have to earn your death. You know. So you didn't walk by. You didn't walk by the trailer and say, "Now y'all know I would have whooped his ass." Stop. <laughs> nah, nah. That's how I felt. Nah, nah. He was. Um, uh, his name is Jordan. Um, no, nah, no. Nah, he was. He was. He was cool, man. He definitely brought something. Something needed to the character. We were looking for Derek for a while. Well, listen, I'm glad that we were able to sit down. I'm mad that I didn't hear the music before and see the visual, but I will go watch it, and everybody else should too, and we're going to keep the link up. so people Yeah, let's keep the link up. Let's keep it running, man. You got to check that visual out. You're going to love that shit. Yeah, and definitely come back. I mean, this has been an enjoyable conversation. You know what yeah, I mean? I thought you were going to come in like, yo, what's up? Hey, nah, listen, man. I'm trying I'm trying to give the game to y'all, man. So let's stay tapped in with each, with, with each other and... uh like for sure, even even though it's, even though it's on the other side of a computer, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's keep building the relationship. You know yeah, I mean? for sure. And I want to be compensated if the threesome with Lizzo happens because hey, I look, hey, look, hey, hey, I mean, <laughs> you got a, you got a platform. You can uh, you can you know, you know, you know, you know, I got I, I, I got a link to the I got a link to the people at OnlyFans. I mean, I like to make shit happen. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna we're gonna keep it all the way classy and uh, man. We uh we gonna we gonna stay tapped in for sure though. I really appreciate you fellas having me on here because um you know you didn't have to bring me on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, no, of course. Look, look, the way Kitty be pushing putting you down on my Facebook, I was like, all right, now I have to I have hey. to go. So I hit stars. They sent me the the link to all the episodes, and I start watching. And I'm telling you, I rewound it so much, I don't even know the people's names, but I'm so caught up in what's happening on the show. Yeah. And just congratulations on all your success and being able to you know, create diverse characters to show the depth of your skill and uh, just, you know, anything we can do to help you, just let us know. No, I definitely appreciate that, man. You guys are already going above and beyond just by having me here and then, uh, you know, reposting those two links. Yeah. So thank you for that, bro. No, and I need the therapist number. I'm not playing. Oh, no, for sure. I'm going to tap in with you with that because it's, right. uh, it's, it's, it. it's something that can help us as men. Yeah. For no, sure. I appreciate it. All right. Well, yeah, thank you yeah. so much. Ty is out. Peace. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Love. Talk to you soon.